Am I live? But am I really live? Pro audio amplifiers just for me. Oh, thank you, eBay. You shouldn't have. No, really. He's even pro audio. Untouched panel lamp. Oh, that's kind of cool. Two pounds. It's only three left. Ooh. MP3 decoder board, TF USB reader, IR remote, Bluetooth. Wow. Some, uh, some shit on eBay. Fake Plexi. These are not pro audio. These are uh, stage audio. Well, I guess that's pro, but it's not. It's not pro. Pro audio is it's hi-fi gear, right? Hi-fi gear and recording stuff. It's not. It's not stage gear. It's different audio. Get me out of eBay. I don't want me on fucking eBay. Get. I gotta, I gotta get focused. So distracted every every time I go to do a thing. Get distracted. Okay, C++, welcome back to the, whoa, welcome back, my, uh, my mic boom has gotten uh, real loose somewhere, and, uh, I'm not entirely sure how to fix it. It's the, I think it's the springs, it's like, uh, okay. Oh, what's that? I don't know what that is. Yes, yeah, the um, the the main kind of uh, spring actuation motion, not the uh. So it's got two. It's got two arms. It's, it's a scissor arm, as as you might imagine. So it's a normal boom. I'm sure you've seen it, but the uh, it's the newer one. Um, but uh, so the scissor arm works normally. But you can also change the relative position of the secondary arm, which is on a... I'm sorry, this, this must sound horrible for you. Uh, which is on a second uh, thumb screw, which is fine. That that second adjustment is is rock solid, but the uh, the scissor motion is just so loosey-goosey. And it's not cool. Maybe I need uh, stronger springs. Sorry. Anyway. Maybe it was the, uh, that. Anyway, let's stop messing around with stuff and start doing C. Uh, so this is what we've been covering. This is chapter two. We've got Borchar. Oh, this is the, uh, the, uh, internal, the internal, uh, types in C. Welcome to the mouth noise stream. Um, Borchar, wide character, T, uh, 16-bit Unicode character, 32-bit Unicode character, shorts, ints, longs, uh, long longs, which are twice the size of longs, floats, doubles twice the size of floats, long doubles twice the size of long. It's not specifically twice the size. They have to be uh, at least the size, and they can be up to twice as long. Or oh, there was something that, that could be even bigger, but... We didn't actually go into how to set the length or the size, or if that's done automatically by the compiler if you just assign it a really big number. But of course, you can't do that. It, it would have to be specified. I think it is. It's a. Uh, it's a. Uh, it's it's um, extrapolatable uh, from the bit, the bit depth depth. Is that right? Is that the right? So I'm gone off the rails. It's the. Uh, it's the, uh, oh my god, what do you call it? It's not bit rate, it's not bit depth. The, the bit that you're using, the operating uh, environment that you're using, so it's 60, x86, x64, so 64 bit, 32 bit, would be 32 bits per, per chunk or byte. I don't know. Bytes are 8 bits usually. 
Let's move on. Maybe bytes have been explained as 8 bits usually because we do like small example projects in these learning tutorial things. And 8, eight bit, eight bit uh, is a lot easier to maybe maybe comprehend because it's uh, the numbers are a little bit smaller. Who knows? Let's let's move on to stuff that we do actually know. So we've got a little a little crappy program. We've got some signed and unsigned variables. So we learned that signed variables will loop through their uh, their their scope if you hit the uh, the outer limit, whereas a an unsigned variable. Well, just potato. If you get to the upper, the upper limit of its thing, assigned assigned variable will return a modulo of its maximum range. That that is the book definition. Boom, and we've got some stuff. And in C plus plus, you can assign an integer a a decimal value, a float value. Uh, however, when you call, when you uh, return the integer value from the uh, variable that you've assigned a decimal to, it will only return the integer portion of the decimal. It will truncate the rest of the thing, and some compilers will not accept that as valid code. I 100% know that in C, uh, Clang will scream at you if you use stupid stuff like this. And also, it is stupid stuff. We have... Um, <laughs> Typecasting, if you want to make a float in it, you should do that specifically, I think. It would be better for your program. Uh, so let's see how i is there, but pi is i, i is 3, unsigned char, c equals negative 1, signed char, c 256, cool. Uh, it was unsigned char, negative 1. Was uh oh, what's it undefined? It doesn't just give it a null value if you do stupid stuff like this. You can't put a signed value into a an unsigned. Yeah. Okay, okay, unsigned u10, u2 equals i equals 10, and i, i2 equals 42. Good, cool. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, if you, uh, if you type unsigned u... Was it unsigned ones that loop through there? They're full. Ah, yes, it was. Yeah, unsigned. Yeah, that's what that's what I said, right? It's not what I said. Fuck. Unsigned unsigned values loop through their their, their scale. Fuck. No, I'm not even sure. It's just. Anyone remember what page that was on? Constants. Why is this gunk on my fucking phone screen? Gross. 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 Let me just, uh. I have a clock on hand. It's probably a stupid idea, but it happened. You heard nothing. And you know what, to be honest, I'm not sure that helped. <laughs> what was that noise? Book. Let's do some real learning. Let's go back.
This is this is review. I didn't. I missed last week, and I've forgotten everything. This is pointers. It was a lot on pointers. I don't mind references, and I don't mind pointers, but at the same time, sometimes I wonder why we uh, why we use them. I've gone too far. These are C++ keywords. Hit double. Uh, here we go. <laughs> Compound types. Wait, what? What? All right, okay. That was just the end of chapter, uh, I see. The end of the segment kind of recap. I really don't like this film. When you uh, like swipe to scroll, it, it's like it doesn't animate. It just pauses like what you see and then it just snaps the way you swiped to. It is charging, okay. Literals, no. Was it before literals? Oh, this is so stupid. This is like the boringest stream ever. But it's okay. Streaming it gives me like a reason to do. Ah, here we go. Yeah, yeah. So unsigned characters loop through their, their, their scope. They return a modulo value of their scope. Signed. Signed characters, if you initialize them out of their scope, they are undefined. Which is bad? Or it's not bad, you can do that. You don't have to, uh, you don't have to give uh, a variable a value instantly most of the time. You do have to give consts a variable at the time of initialization though. Because you cannot change a const. Pointers. So a pointer is an object which holds, better not put that on the old stream deck there, which holds the address, uh, the memory address of another object. This can be either the first, uh, the first byte of address, uh, first byte of memory, the address of the first byte of memory of that thing, or it can be the byte after the last byte of the thing, which means that two separate pointers initialized differently can point to the same space ah oh, ah oh, no ah oh, gross whatever ah oh. I need a spray bottle for my aspirin alcohol that would have been nice uh yeah we got references and pointers references are not objects references are like pointers I need to turn my speakers off because I'm not using them um, they, you can use a reference to an object to change the object's properties unless the object is a const. Duh. And, oh yeah, here we go. Here's the, here's the sick pointer stuff. So, a reference will always point to the same thing. 
pointer can be pointed to other things. Pointer can be reused, reassigned. Uh, what do we got here? So you got int bob equals eight oh oh eight. Int ref bob equals bob. <laughs> Standard console out bob. Bob equals 42, standard CR ref Bob uh, gives us uh, uh, 42, gives us 808, and that gives us 42, and that gives us 42. And then ref Bob equals 808, and then standard console out Bob, and that will give us 808, which is cool. So you can use a reference to change the value of uh, what the reference is pointing to, and you can use the, the actual that oh hey look it slipped out of its uh spring has slipped out of its little I don't I'm not sure how much difference that's gonna make. It wasn't like off the thing. But anyway, so reference can uh change the value. You can change the value directly and you can use it to return the value of what it was pointing to. Good. It's essentially um just the variable except for you can't make it anything else other than the variable. Uh Oh, and you can use, um, can you use a, a const reference, uh, which doesn't allow you to change the variable behind the reference, maybe? You can't have a pointer to a point, a reference, but you can have a pointer to a pointer, and you can have a reference to a pointer. <laughs> That's cool. So const, constant variables are fine a reading. You can use them in any scenario where you can read a constant variable. Constant pointer, constant variables are a different thing, apparently, and they have to abide by special laws. And I get the feeling like... I mean... I get that it's cool that you can have a reference to a memory address. <coughs> oh my god. Man dies on the stream the movie. <coughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I don't even know what that was. Oh. Oh, <coughs> Jesus. Just full on killed. Ah. This program file1.cc defines and initializes buff size. Okay. All right, yeah. So, constants in the C++ language are local to the file that they are written in, to the file that they're compiled in. So if you want a constant variable to be available from maybe a header file or whatever, you have to prefix it with extern, which makes it externally accessible. Sorry. Oh my god. I didn't mean to <coughs> Ooh, interject that. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. That's cool. A 
reference has to be the same type as what it's referring to unless the reference it's, is a constant. What? Ooh. This is one of those bits that I didn't fucking understand. Here we go. Two exceptions to the rule that the type of a reference must match the type of the object to which it refers. The first exception is that we can initialize a reference to const from any expression that can be converted to the type of reference. In particular, we can bind a reference const to a non-const object, a literal or a more general expression. So <coughs> int i equals 42, const int and r1 equals i is fine const int and r2 equals 42 is fine const int and r3 equals r1 times by 2 is fine and int and r4 equals r times 2 <coughs> this was oh yeah this was one of the Right. Oh, all oh, right. Okay. So you can't. Obviously, you can't. That's stupid. Ah, oh, I get it. I get it. I've read it again. My eyes have been opened. You can't bind a reference. Um, you can't bind a reference to algebra, because a reference is a reference to an object, and algebra is not an object. It is a function. But you can bind a const you can bind a const reference to an algebraic expression ah cool right i get it it's nice <coughs> So if you bind a constant reference to something which is of a different type to the reference, the compiler will uh, handle it, as it were. It will convert the, uh, the input. <coughs> okay, cool. It will convert the input to the, const the, the, reference, the reference type. If you have a reference to a constant va a variable, <coughs> oh wait, hang on, no. What? If you have a constant reference, you can't use. Yeah, you can't edit the variable reference by a constant reference. That's it. You can't edit the variable. In i equals forty-two. In reference one equals i. It's fine. I is 42. <coughs> Constant and R2 equals I. Also fine. R1 equals 0. You setting in I to 0. And R2 equals 0. Error. R2 is a reference to const. A const reference cannot change the value of the thing. Cool. Good. <coughs>
Okay, so if you want a pointer to a constant type, you need to have a constant pointer. However, you can't use a constant pointer to change the value of a constant type behind it because both things are constant. <clears throat> right, okay. So you need to use a pointer to const to point to a constant variable. And you can use a constant pointer to point to a non-constant variable, but using a constant pointer, you will not be able to edit the variable stored within the pointer. Or a, what? <coughs> Excuse me. We can use a constant pointer to const to point to a non constant object. Cool. But you can't change the value through it. <coughs> oh, I see. Right. Okay. Right, okay, so if the initialization of the pointer has const before the star, it's a pointer to const. But if it has the star within, if it has the const within the star area, the uh, the uh, the pointer de declaration, the memory, uh, the, mem the memory, the reference, no? Oh, what's the word? I knew this eons ago. When you put a star in, in to declare a pointer like, like here, you can have const here, which is a, uh, <coughs> sorry, no. You can have const here, so it will point to a constant and it'll be a constant in pointer. Or you can have const here, which means you won't be able to change the pointer itself I thought we changed this. Yeah, I thought we changed. Fuck you. <clears throat> oh, it was commented out. That's why it wouldn't have. It wouldn't have re redone that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we did. Yeah, look, see. Okay, I get it now. I get it. I have understood what I had not understood before. Right. <clears throat> so, a pointer to const can't change the, va the variable behind it. But a constant pointer to a non-constant variable can be used to change the variable behind it. However, cannot be used to change the variable to which it points. <laughs> the object, sorry. So a top level const is to indicate that the pointer itself is a constant. <clears throat> and when a pointer can point to a constant object, we refer to that constant as a low level const. Okay. So it's a top level constant and a low level constant. Okay.
Aha. <coughs> the distinction between top level and low level matters when we copy an object. When we copy an object, top level consts are ignored. So what you're saying to me is um ooh, a constant pointer variable <clears throat> copying an object doesn't change the copied object as a result it is immaterial whether the object copied from or copied into is const on the other hand low level const is never ignored when we copy an object both objects must have the same low level const qualification or there must be a conversion between the types of the two objects in general. We can convert non-const to a const, but not the other way around, of course. Right, yeah. So, yeah, okay. Because it's about the values that the pointers are pointing to rather than the pointers themselves. So, <clears throat> if the const is here, they, they both have to have const there. If the const is here, it don't matter. Because that's just the pointer. It's not the thing that we're trying to copy. It's not the data we're trying to access. constant expressions <laughs> a constant expression is an expression that can be evaluated at the time of compilation will not change and does not change <clears throat> constant variables that are initialized with literals and constant variables that are initialized with literals and yeah. yes yes <coughs> algebra containing literals that's what I was trying to say mathematics that will not change mathematics that does not rely on functions uh, non-constant variables and constant variables which are initialized from a function that could potentially change runtime to runtime not not constant expressions. <clears throat> 
Oh, look, C++11. Under the new standard, we can ask the compiler to verify that a variable is a constant expression by declaring the variable in a const expr declaration. Variables declared as const expr are implicitly const, must be initialized by constant expressions. That's cool. So you can use const expr to um, ask your compiler to verify the fact that your constant expression is actually a constant expression. And there are also some functions which we can use to initialize uh, constant expressions, apparently, that are not uh, literals or anything else. It's cool. There we go. Because a constant expression is one that can be evaluated at compile time, there are limits on the types. They are known as literal types because they are simple enough to have literal values. Of the types we've used so far, the arithmetic reference and pointer types are literal types, our sales item class, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, ints, chars, string, bill. <laughs> Ah, oh. <clears throat> having a cold last week is bad now. I mean, it was bad last week, but it's bad now, too. It's just, you know, the constant mouth breathing. The block knows. Like, it's just, it's, there's nothing wrong with me anymore. It's just, you know, it's excess. And it just causes so much mouth breathing. Dehydrated all the time. Talking's difficult. Uh huh. So const expressions have limited scope for use in pointers because pointers point to objects, and objects are more often than not apparently stored in dynamic memory, which means that their addresses will change. Obviously, if it's a const, uh, if it's a constant expression, you can't have the actual value of the thing changing, one because it's a constant, one because it's a constant expression. However, it says here that there is a limited scope for applying uh, constant expressions to pointers that point to static addresses. Good. Aha, uh -huh, okay. Constant expression imposes top level const on pointer definitions. So if you use constant expression in your pointer definition, you do not need to include a const after the asterisk. It will do that for you. Is the following code legal or not? If not, how might you make it legal? It says int null equals zero, comma, star p equals null. I'd probably change the word null 
because that's a keyword in C++ for null. Just uh, nil. Nil would be fine. N-I-L. Int nil equals zero star p equals nil. Hang on, I've skipped something here. My scroll wheel has skipped stuff. Oh, look, we're doing... <laughs> what was that noise? <laughs> Type aliases. So you might get hecka bald in the head about typing your types because somebody decided that they'd be real hard to spell. That's literally what it says in the book. Um, you know, because, believe it or not, typing uh, code requires typing and typing requires dude, dudette, somebody with fingers, preferably. Or at least the one finger like appendage. You know what I'm saying? To uh, access the keys. Uh, and the keys obviously have to be pressed in an order, and some of those orders fuck people up. That's all I'm saying. That's all this book's saying. It says uh, <clears throat> traditionally we use type def. Type def uh, allows you to define a type based on another type with a name. And we have some uh, examples here, type def double wages, semicolon. You have created a, a type def of a double, which is now wages. So you can use wages as an initializer uh, for any doubles. <laughs> Yeah, so anything you define with a type def, type def wages is an alias to a double. So it is just a double. And now you can define your aliases with an alias declaration. So you write using and then the alias name and then equals. And then what you are aliasing is on the right hand side in semicolon. Cool. However, you must exercise caution when dealing with uh, type def aliasing so as that you don't uh, destroy your scope for variable names, etc. And vice versa, in fact. Declarations that use type alias that represent compound types and cons can yield surprising results. Oh no. For example, the following declarations use the type p string, which is an alias for the type char star. Good. Type def char star p string char star p string constant p string c s t i equals zero. Wait, what? 
All right. Constant P string star PS. The base type in these declarations is const p string. As usual, a const that appears in the base type modifies the given type. A type of p string is pointed to char, so const p string is a constant pointer to char, not a pointer to constant char. Her. Oh yeah, of course it is, because the base type is char star. The <clears throat> this seems like lazy, but okay. The auto type specifier tells the compiler to deduce the type from the initializer. By implication, a variable that uses auto as its type specifier must have an initializer. The type of the item is deduced from the type of the result of adding val1 and val2. Auto item equals val1 plus val2. Cool, that's fine. Here the compiler will deduce the type of the item. And the type returned by applying plus to val1 and val2. val1 and val2 are sales item objects. Item will have the type sales item. The first item is the type double. And item has the type double and so on. That's cool. Okay, so you can only use auto for one type per declaration. Ooh. But you can use auto for multiple declarations of the same type. So if you have a bunch of it, if they were all going to be ints, you can put them all in a line. If they're not all going to be ints, you can't put them all in a line. Oh, in fact, look here, look here, look at there. Uh, you can have. Oh no, but that's fine, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have auto i equals zero, star p equals and i. But the auto just evaluates to int. 
because you have the star and the and already there. Um, it's all it's all of type int, but one's a pointer and a one's a reference, <laughs> and one is the actual variable itself. Cool. The type the compiler in first for auto is not always exactly the same as the initializer's type. Instead, the compiler adjusts the type to conform to normal initialization rules. First, have we seen when you use this reference, we are really using the object to which the reference refers. In particular, when we use a reference to initialize as an initializer, the initializer is the corresponding object. The, cor the compiler uses that object's type for auto's type deduction. Cool. As expected. So I'm, uh, I'm premiering that the the Star Wars video today because I can't wait. I thought it would have uh, processed the HD while I was asleep, but it did not. So I I'm doing a test. I've uploaded the the full 50 megabyte per second video to YouTube. Just took all night. Yes, took all night. Uh, just to see if the quality doesn't uh, degrade as badly. <laughs> Second, auto ordinarily ignores top-level consts, as usually in initializations, low-level consts, such as when an initializer is appointed to a const, are kept. Good. If we want the Deduced type to have a top level const, we must say so explicitly. Const auto f equals. Okay, cool. But you can do it if you need to. We can also specify we want a reference to the auto deduced type. Normal initialization rules still apply. Auto and G equals C I, auto and H equals 42, const auto and J equals 42. Oh, here we go. Look, G is a const in and that is bound to C I. Error, we can't bind a plain reference to a literal. Of course you can't. But you can bind a constant reference to a literal. Const auto and J equals 42. Okay. <laughs> When we ask for a reference to an auto deduce type top level consts and the initializer are not ignored. As usual, consts are not top level when we bind a reference to the initializer. When we define several variables in the same statement, it is important to remember that a reference or pointer is part of a particular declarator, not part of the base type for the declaration. As usual, the initializers must provide consistent auto deduce types. Good. Using the variable definitions from this section, determine what happens in each of these assignments. Oh. Hmm. Oh. Oh. 
other there. Type def char star p string const p string cstr equals zero. This is this is just uh, what we had. Can I go back? Ah, poopy. Ah, uh, how do I go back? Ah, uh, seventy-five maybe somewhere close to that. No, that's uninitialized variables. Ooh, that's literal since it's already done it. Fuck. I'm never clicking one of those links again. Yeah, so it's just all the code from the chapter basically placed into a big, uh, big PNG. Oh. Write a program containing the variables and assignments from the previous exercise. Print the variables before and after the assignments to check whether your predictions in the previous exercise were correct. If not, study the examples. Hmm. Hmm. It's another, it's another, I mean, at least there's not a lot of video to encode. It's basically just a single picture. So we've got const int i equals 42. Uh, so we get a constant int. We got auto j equals i. So j is a constant int as well. We've got constant auto and k equals i. So we've got a constant reference to a constant int. We've got auto star p equals and i. So we have a non-constant pointer to constant in uh, constant auto j2 equals i. So we have a another constant in and k2 equals i we have a constant reference to a constant in So 253, the DECL type, Decla declaration type. Sometimes we want to define a variable with a type that the compiler deduces from an expression, but do not want to use the expression, that expression to initialize the variable. For such cases, the new standard introduced in the second type specifier, declaration type, which returns the type of its operand. The compiler analyzes the expression to determine its type, but does not evaluate the expression. Oh. Declaration type f sum equals x. Sum has whatever type f returns. Okay.
the way declaration type handles top level constant references differs subtly from the way auto does. When the expression to which we apply declaration type is a variable and declaration type returns the type of that variable including top level constant references. Cool. const int ci equals zero and cj equals ci declaration type ci x equals zero x has type constant int declaration type cj y equals x y has type constant int and and is bound to x <laughs> Declaration type CJ Z error Z as a reference and must be initialized. Cool. It is worth noting that declaration type is the only context in which a variable defined as a reference is not treated as a synonym for the object to which it refers. When we apply declaration type to an expression that is not a variable, we will get the type that that expression yields. As we'll see in 411, page 135, some expressions will cause declaration type to yield a reference type. Generally speaking, declaration type returns a reference type for expressions that yield objects that can stand on the left side of the assignment. What? Declaration type of an expression can be a reference type in i equals 42, star p equals and i, and r equals i. Declaration type r plus zero brackets b r zero. yes yields an uninitialized int declaration type star p c error c is an int and it must be initialized yeah here R is a reference, so declaration type R is a reference type. If you want to, the type to which R refers, we can use R in the expression, such as R plus zero, which is an expression that yields a value that has a non-reference type. Cool. So an important difference between declaration type and auto is that the deduction done by declaration type depends on the form of its given expression. What can be confusing is that enclosing the name of a variable in parentheses affects the type returned by declaration type. We can apply declaration type to a variable without any parentheses. Get that get the type of that variable. If we wrap the variable's name in one or more sets of parentheses, the compiler will evaluate the operand as an expression, a variable is an expression that can be in the left hand wait a variable is an expression that can be the left hand side of an assignment as a result declaration type on such an expression yields reference Right, okay, so declaration type is already going to have brackets. I see. I skipped that. My brain fucking skipped that. So I'm going to have to stop after this. 
we'll do the we'll do the uh, the example. We'll do the the questions and then we'll stop. Uh, so declaration type brackets brackets i brackets brackets d error d isn't in and must be initialized. Declaration type brackets i brackets e e isn't uninitialized in. Remember that declaration type variable double parentheses is always a reference, but declaration type variable single parentheses is a reference type only if the variable is a reference. Okay. The following code determine the type of each variable and the value each variable has when the code finishes. In A equals three, B equals four, declaration type brackets A, C equals A. So C is an int and C is equal to three. Declaration type bracket bracket B bracket bracket D equals A. So D is an int and a reference to an int and it's bound to A plus plus C plus plus D. Uh, C is 4, B is 4, A is 4, and D is a reference to A. Yeah? Assignment um, is an example of an expression that yields a reference type. The type is a reference to the type on the left hand of the upper hand. That is, if i is an int, then the reference of the expression i equals x is an int and. Example of an expression that yields reference type. Okay. The type is a reference to the type of the left hand upper hand. Yeah. If i is an int, type of expression i equals x is an int and. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Type of value of each thing available in this code. In a equals 3, b equals 4. Declaration type a, c equals a, c is equal to 3. Declaration type a equals b. D is a reference to A in AND. Describe the differences in type deduction between declaration type and auto. Give an example of the expression where auto and declaration type will deduce the same type and an example where they will deduce differing types. Um, yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, <sighs> auto doesn't take into account uh, parentheses uh, in the operation. That is, uh, beyond the algebra, we will evaluate the function as per normal. However, declaration type will evaluate double parentheses as a reference type. Therefore, any form of assignment using auto with algebra that contains double quotations. Sorry. <laughs> we'll evaluate to the type of the algebra, whereas uh, declaration type will evaluate to a reference to the type that is within the parentheses. For example, auto. How'd you fucking do an auto again? Oh my god. Oh my god, someone's ringing my fucking house. Who does that? Who rings houses? No one does. Yeah, so or auto i equals uh, brackets, brackets, d two. <laughs> Sorry. A, a squared will mean that. I will be whatever type A is. 
probably a double. But if you did uh, type uh, declaration type brackets brackets a squared i, you would have an error because you have an unsigned reference. But you could assign that to something else. And there you go. Boom. Uh, so we've run over. My brain is actually leaking out of my head now. I have to go do my laundry because the pants that I put in apparently are very delicate and require removing from the washing machine the second they finish their cycle. Um, so thanks for watching the live stream. If you came to watch the live stream, um, still waiting for some post, I believe. So I will be potentially chair bound rather than available to actually go out and do real work for the meantime. So I might have a small break and then a small segment of raw cage stage three grip that is um but yeah that's that that will probably be coming up in about 10 minutes you know have a sandwich do some stuff with some stuff uh thank you for watching the video on demand and you had to hear that whole spiel about how stuff that you're just about to miss or have already watched depending on your circumstance uh but that's fine uh thanks for watching the vod if you did watch the vod and I will see you, as always, in the next episode.